A couple of months ago, I released two videos about the Oddworld universe and the strange creatures found within its lore, and while I covered most of the beings of that world, both sapient and non-sapient, I left out a few of them due to a combination of time constraints and feeling that these particular species would be best left out to make way for the more iconic and recognisable ones. However, upon looking through the comments of those two videos, it seems that a great many of you would have liked for those species to be talked about as well, and not being one to willingly disappoint my subscribers, I've decided that this week's video should be dedicated to those final few species, and to the people who lamented their absence. If you haven't seen the previous two Oddworld videos yet, I highly recommend that you do so. The links can be found in the description below. And so, in this video, we will once again be visiting Oddworld for the third and final time, thus wrapping up Beware the Q's Oddworld trilogy. But, before we get into it, I'd like to ask that you please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and to also consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you. We'll begin with the Vikers, who are an androgynous, hermaphroditic race of purple-skinned tripeds. They have frail bodies with disproportionately large heads and small, beady eyes. As a result of self-inflicted, life-extending surgery, which allows the Vikers to survive long past their natural lifespan, their skin is wrinkled and saggy, with bones, veins, and muscles easily visible. Vikers have a total of seven limbs. Four of these are short, spindly arms, each ending in three long-clawed digits, but with no discernible hand. Notably, the claws themselves are used for gripping objects, as opposed to the digits, which are short and stubby in comparison. The remaining limbs are legs, arranged in a tripodal stance, with two facing forwards and one backwards. Unlike a number of other industrialist species on Mudos, Vikers are hermaphroditic rather than eusocial. That is to say that, unlike Gluckens, Sligs, and Mudokens, Vikers have no queen or no defined class structure. Like Mudokens, Vikers show little regard for clothing, usually dressing in little more than a loincloth, though headgear and eyewear are also common. The vast majority of Vikers speak in a shrill, whiny voice, though some have a much deeper register. Although they bear a passing resemblance to the Gluckens, and indeed the rest of the Octagai family, Vikers belong to a distinct taxonomic order. The only other species known to exist within this order are the Interns, who are often exploited by their Viker cousins as indentured labour and security forces. We'll come back to them soon. In contrast to other ruling industrialist races, such as the Gluckens, Vikers are more than capable of defending themselves, thanks mostly to their sharp, highly dexterous claws. Although preferring to employ lower industrialist species for their grunt work, such as sligs and interns, Vikers themselves will fight, if necessary, with some gladly joining in using their laboratory syringes and meat cleavers as weapons. That being said, Vikers are individualistic to the extreme. Despite their obsession with inflicting pain on others, a Viker may quickly be reduced to a sobbing wreck when this pain is reciprocated. The interns are to Vikers what sligs are to Gluckens, a slave race bred to do their master's bidding. They do all the dirty work for the Vikers, all the while drowning out all unwanted noises with the latest beats pumping into their heads via headphones. Like the Vikers, their heads are abnormally large compared to the rest of their bodies. Unlike Vikers, however, interns are bipedal, and have only two arms with five fingers and no thumbs, and considerably more muscle mass. They also have vertically aligned mouths that were stitched shut by their Viker masters to keep them from constantly whistling to the sound of their annoying music. Interns are the subservient species to the Vikers, filling menial administrative tasks such as filing, porting, and checking up on experiments. They also act as the security force in the Vikers' facilities, equipped with the latest consumer goods weaponry. 
In turn, are loyal lackeys, highly supportive of the Vikers' work despite their poor working conditions, and are every bit as sadistic in their scientific methodology. Interns have long, canoe-like heads, along which runs a vertical slit of a mouth, only ever seen stitched up. They are surgically prevented from whistling while they work. They have two small prehensile horns, which are used to express feelings. Their spindly arms end with five long, spidery fingers that pack a mean slap, and their feet normally appear to be stitched up stumps. Due to their long working shifts, most interns have succumbed to melted candle syndrome. Interns usually adorn themselves with trendy purple and yellow striped speedos with matching reversed baseball caps and their excessively loud headphones. The appearance and behaviour of fleeches is drawn from a number of animals. The idea of pets being flushed down the toilet comes from the urban legend of baby alligators, taken from Florida as pets, being flushed down toilets and forming large colonies in the sewers of New York City. The Oddworld equivalent is a fine example of the Gluckens' wasteful, throwaway culture. Accordingly, the mouths of a fleech look like stumpy versions of a gator's snout. The teeth are placed on the outside of the mouth, to give it a cheeky yet threatening expression. Their name is thought to be a portmanteau of frog and leech, the sticky tongue of the former obviously being the inspiration behind the fleech's own. The fleech's ability to stretch open their mouth is inspired by the ability of snakes to unhinge their jaws. Their locomotive cycle is based on that of the inchworm. They have also been compared to sharks and, most obviously, worms. Meeps are large, unipedal mammals native to Oddworld that resemble sheep. Meeps are typically used as livestock and are featured ingredients in tasty treats produced by rupture farms. They graze in open fields and valleys, and their meat is known to be used as slog grub. Meeps have one large eye and one foot. To move, they hop on their foot, similar to gabbits. They have a large head and rounded body with a stubby tail. Their eye is normally half-closed, but opens wide when frightened. Meeps aren't the most intelligent creatures in Oddworld. All they ever do is graze, and they must be herded to do what they are told. A much more intelligent being, however, is the Almighty Raisin, a wise, long-lived, seed-like creature that has evolved from an elder tree in the northern parts of Mudos. Because of his vast knowledge and wisdom, the Madokans hold him to a near-religious level, often going to see him when seeking guidance or advice. Unable to move, he relies on small creatures called rats as an extra thousand or so pair of eyes to see the world around him. The Almighty Raisin lives in one of the many underground caverns of Mudos. The Almighty Raisin spent his first 6,000 years as an elder tree himself. After this, he reached his third stage of life, shedding his roots and limbs to eventually become what he is today. Including his life as a tree, the Almighty Raisin is roughly 14,400 years old. The Almighty Raisin has no arms or legs, is about 12 feet in height, and weighs a little more than a ton. Unable to move without the help of others, the Almighty Raisin spends all of his time sitting about in his lair, astrally projecting his consciousness onto the world above. When dislodging his mind from his body, the Almighty Raisin drifts his consciousness across the landscape of Mudos to see or hear through the eyes and ears of others. The first and foremost interest of the Almighty Raisin is to try to regain a sense of balance to the land of Mudos. In his visions, he has perceived a horrific doom clouding over the land, but the Raisin believes that there are several alternative futures, thus he tries to influence a destiny that he believes to be the most peaceful and harmonic. He loves the simple creatures in life, and finds the greatest pleasure when casually observing through the eyes and ears of newborns. He is seen into the personal and private lives of all the inhabitants of Mudos. As a result, he is able to have compassion for even those whom he would consider being enemies. 
He has witnessed so many things for so many generations that he simply hasn't much patience for the foolishness or naivety of others. It's difficult for others to understand his speech, as his statements are usually loaded with several compounded messages. He's been known to fall asleep in mid-sentence as well, leaving his listeners wondering. And that's it. I don't think I forgot any, but if I did, leave a comment and let me know. Thank you for watching, and a big thank you goes out to my members and patrons. This has been Beware the Q, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.